The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike, the cigarette that's toasted to taste better. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted Cigarettes, they take fine tobacco, it's light, tobacco, it's mild, tobacco too. And it's toasted, yes, it's toasted, because the toasting brings the flavor right through. So to get better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted cigarette. This is Don Wilson. The song you just heard has an important message for everyone who smokes. The sure way to get better taste from your cigarette is to make sure you get Lucky Strike. It's toasted to taste better. Of course, the better taste of a Lucky begins with fine tobacco. And then, that fine tobacco is toasted. It's toasted, the famous Lucky Strike process, tones up this naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, a Lucky tastes better because it's the cigarette of fine tobacco and it's toasted to taste better. So, be happy. Go Lucky. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny does his first television program of the season. But, of course, he also has a radio show to do. So let's go back an hour and visit Jack in his dressing room. He's relaxing before rehearsal. There's no business like show, business like no business I know. Gee, when Irving Berlin wrote that song, he... Knew what he was doing, all right. There's no business like show business. And I'm sure glad I'm part of it. Gosh, I'll never forget how I first started. I remember when I made up my mind to go into Baltimore. It was the last week in June, and I was 19. <laughs> I had just graduated and didn't feel like going on to high school. <laughs> Ah, what memories those early vaudeville days bring back. Split weeks, two a day, New York, Broadway, and the Palace. I'll never forget who was on the same bill with me when I first played the Palace. Jimmy Durante, Georgie Jessel, Johnny Wilkes Booth. <laughs> <laughs> then vaudeville began to be killed off by a new medium, radio. I wanted to go into radio, but... I wouldn't try it until I had a surefire formula and character. Then I hit upon it. I decided to play the character of a tight, miserly skinflint. See, the public gets a million laughs out of my stingy character. And so do I when I count the money I save. <laughs> yes, sir. There's no business like show business. da da bum boom ba boom then when my radio program was doing all right, I moved out to Hollywood and went into the movies. See, the movie business is funny. You make good pictures year after year, and nobody thinks anything about it. But you make one stinker, and you're through. <laughs> Gee, I'm glad I quit before I made a bad one. <laughs> Of course, I take a lot of kidding about the horn blows at midnight. And yet I can honestly say I never heard of more than 10 or 12 people who didn't like it. Come to think of it, I never heard of more than 10 people who went to see it. <laughs> and yet there were 12 people who didn't like it. <laughs> this I don't understand at all. Oh, well, you can't please all of the people all the time. Sometimes I think that... I'm back, boss. So soon? 
Hey, did you get the shaving cream for me, Rochester? Uh Uh-huh, I got the drugstore across the street. Well, we haven't got much time, so come on and shave me. Okay. Now, hold your head still while I lather you up. Okay. Say, what kind of shaving cream have you got there? It smells different from the brand I usually use. Oh, it is different. It's the newest on the market. It contains 18% lanolin, 7% antiseptic, 50% soap, 9% chlorophyll, and 16% Smirnoff vodka. <laughs> so what's the vodka for? That saves money on towels. When you're through shaving, you just lick it off. <laughs> Gosh, what won't they think of next? Come on, Rochester, you got my face all lathered up. When are you going to shave me? In just a minute. Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Wilson! Mr. Wilson! What is it, Rochester? I'm going to shave Mr. Benny now. Okay, I'll tell the boys. Hey, fellas, Rochester's going to shave Mr. Benny now. Gosh, since my arranger wrote that tune, he won't let anyone shave without us. <laughs> How are you doing, Rochester? I'm practically done now. Oh, say, Jack, may I, uh, may I talk to you for a minute? Certainly. What is it, Don? Can we do the dress rehearsal right away? I want to see my dentist before the show goes on the air. Wait a minute, Don. How come you made a dental appointment on the day of the broadcast? It was an emergency. Uh, last night, while I was uh, watching television, my wife gave me a sandwich and I broke a tooth when I bit into a bone. A chicken bone? No, my wife's arm. She didn't pull it back fast enough. (laughs) Oh, Don, you're joking. (laughs) Yes, I am, Jack. But I did break a tooth, and if I don't have it fixed, I'm afraid I won't be able to do the commercial properly on the program. Well, don't let that worry you. The sportsman quartet, they can always do it, you know. Yeah, I know, and they're across the hall rehearsing with Malin Merrick, your arranger. Well, come on, I'll go listen to it. I'll be back in a few minutes, Rochester. But, boss, you've still got a little lather on your face. Don't worry, I'll get it off before the show. Come on down. Hold it, fellas. Hold it, hold it. Where's my arranger? Oh, uh, oh, oh Malin. Yes, Jack? Uh, how are you getting along with the boys in the band? Fine. After all, we're not exactly strangers. I've worked with them for years. I know how to control them. Well, I'm glad someone can control them. The way they carry on drinking and everything. Oh, <laughs> Jack, I think you're too hard on them. They're not so bad. Oh, they're not. Look at them. Bagby, half asleep there on the piano. Rice leaning against his bass fiddle to keep from falling down. (laughs) And look at Remley. I mean, what kind of an instrument is that he's trying to play? Instrument? That's a stomach pump. (laughs) Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, Malin, the reason I'm here is I'm wondering whether you can prepare a commercial for the sportsman to do on today's program. Sure, I've got a real catchy tune right here. Hit it, fellas. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Look, Malin, do you have to play that tune of yours all the time just because you wrote it? I want the quartet to do the commercial on today's program. Now, can you have something ready by airtime? Oh, sure, Jack. In fact, we have one here, and it's all about you and your big blue eyes. <laughs> Commercial about me and my eyes? Ah, oh, sweet. Let's hear it, Malin. Okay, take it, fellas. Blue eyes smiling at me. Nothing but blue eyes do I see. Never saw a man always so gay, except on the day we get our pay. When he takes a swim, the girlies all screech, cause his bloomers reach clear down to the beach. But you know we found happiness, working with blue eyes on CBS. Oh, 
did you know? Take a tip from me, smoke an LSMFT. <laughs> Better tasting, too. Fine tobacco, through and through. <laughs> when you start to puff, you will like them, sure enough. <laughs> made better, too. Made of fine tobacco. Very mild, and that's a fact. Lucky strikes are made better by far. No other brand is on a par. Everyone agrees throughout the land. Lucky's are best, the favorite brand, so... Blue eyes, they light up when we say lucky strike. So light up a lucky, the smoke you like. Well. Thanks, thanks very much, fellas, and I sure appreciate your dedicating that song to me. Now, Malin, I'm going back to my dressing room and see if Dennis has come in yet. Then we can get on with the... Remley, stop licking the lather off my face! <laughs> For heaven's sakes. Now, wait for me, fellas. There's no business like show business. Da -dum -bum -bum. Back so soon, Mr. Benny? Uh, was Dennis Day here, or did he call? No, sir. I wonder where he could be. I better call up his house and see if he's left yet. Say, Maple, what is it, Gertrude? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what the Egyptian wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny. Okay, I'll ring Dennis' house. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry, but I have another date tonight. I know we'll have a hot time, but I just can't. <laughs> Did he ask you for a date, Gertrude? Not exactly. He wanted me to come over to his house and help him finish the ironing. <laughs> I better try and get him Dennis Day's house. You know, it's always hard getting back to work after a vacation. Now, you said it, Mabel. And, gee, I had such a wonderful time at Catalina. I became an expert skin diver. Skin diving? Isn't that the sport where you put on an oxygen tank and see how far down in the ocean you can go? Yeah, and you also have to put fins on your feet. You needed fins? <laughs> The girl who gets $20 an hour for crushing grapes. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No offense was intended. Is that skin diving as exciting as people say it is? Yeah, you never can tell what'll happen. Once I was down on the ocean floor and a great big octopus came up behind me and wrapped all of its eight arms around me. Oh, gosh, were you scared? Yeah, I felt like I had a date with the sportsman quartet. <laughs> Mr. Benny's so impatient. There's no answer at Dennis Day's house, Mr. Benny. What? But, Mr. Benny, I told you before I couldn't come tonight. Huh? I don't care if it is Robert Taylor's shorts. I got a date. <laughs> <laughs> See that Gertrude's acting independent lately? Did the operator reach Dennis Day? No, there was no answer at his house. He'll probably show up soon. Say, Rochester, I gave you the night off. If you want it, you can leave now. I changed my mind, boss. I'm not going out. But I thought that you and your friend Roy were going to the movies. Yeah, but now he doesn't want to. He told me he decided to play Penny Ante instead. Well, that doesn't sound very exciting. You ought to see Ante. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, anyway, Rochester, if you want to leave, oh, you... Oh, Mr. Benny. Oh, Dennis. Dennis, I was just trying to get you on the phone. Oh, am I late? Not exactly, but I did want to get the rehearsal started a little earlier than usual. Well, I started out for the studio early, but on the way here, I saw some people fighting, and I tried to stop them, and I got socked in the eye twice. Well, that's your own fault, Dennis. You shouldn't have tried to stop them from fighting. It was none of your business. Yes, it was. They were my mother and father. <laughs> well, what caused the argument this time? Oh, my mother was mad at my father. 
Why, what happened? They moved away again, and my father told me where. <laughs> Dennis, I can't understand why your mother keeps trying to lose you. After all, she is your mother. You wouldn't dare say that to her face. <laughs> no, I guess not. But, Dennis, much as I'd like to discuss the pugilistic proclivities of your parents, I think we should get into the studio and start the rehearsal. Okay. Hold it, fellas. Hold it, hold yeah, it. Yeah, hold it, hold, hold it. it. <laughs> now, let's get on with the rehearsal, and we may as well start with the sketch. Oh, what's the sketch we're going to do? Well, we're going to do our version of that spectacular 20th Century Fox Cinemascope production, Garden of Evil. Uh-huh. Which starred Gary Cooper, Susan Hayward, and Richard Widmark. Now, I will play the Gary Cooper part, which is the leading role. Naturally. Yes, naturally. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, Don, let's rehearse it. Set the scene. Okay, a little mood music, please, Malin. <laughs> Malin! 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 <laughs> We're going to Mexico, not Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Now, do what Don Wilson said or he'll bite your arm. <laughs> Go ahead. In the middle of the last century, hordes of Americans moved on to California seeking gold. Our play concerns two men who were bound for the gold fields by boat, but were blown off their course and landed on the coast of lower Mexico. Slim Cooper. <laughs> Our friend Wilson Widmark and I landed on the coast of Mexico. And for two long, hungry days, we walked searching for signs of civilization. Finally, we came across a sleepy little town called... <laughs> Later, this name was changed to Sonora, Mexico. <laughs> town seemed deserted, but I finally took a chance and knocked on a door. Buenos dias, senor. May we come in? Senor, this is a very secret place. Secret? Yes. This is Hernando's hideaway. <laughs> oh, tell me, are you Hernando? No, Hernando is the cook here. Cook, hmm? Oh, then this is a restaurant. What do you have to eat? We serve chili con carne, frijoles, tacos, guacamole, tortillas, and matcha ball soup. <laughs> matcha ball soup? Hernando is only his first name. <laughs> Might as well eat here. Come on, Wilson. Right this way to the table. Say, look at the menu. Hey, they got everything on it. Are you hungry, Wilson? Hungry? I'm so starved I could eat a horse. Don't you get tired of the same thing every day? <laughs> I could understand it if a horse had an arm. Say, I've been looking at our waitress. She's kind of cute. I'm going to try to date her up. Hey, senorita. Si, sí, senor. How about a date tonight? I cannot go with you, senor. I am married. The bartender over there is my husband. Your husband, eh? Go on over and talk to him. Say, are you the bartender? Si. Sí. <laughs> And you're married? Si. And that gal over there? Si. What's your name? Si. Si? Si. Si. 
Have you any children? Six. <laughs> Six? What are the names? Sal, Sid, Sage, Sam, Sal, and Junior. Junior, eh? That must be Sid. Si. <laughs> what? What's your wife's name? Sue. Sue? Si. <laughs> She's a very nice gal. Hey, eh? Slim, the food's in here. Okay, I'm coming. Hey, this food looks good. Yeah, but it needs salt. There ain't none on the table. No salt, eh? Well, I'll get some. Sue? Si. Salt. Si. Chai. Si. Salt. Si. Chai. Never mind! <laughs> we'll eat it without salt. Wilson and I started eating our food in the oppressive heat of the little restaurant. When suddenly the front door opened and she walked in. She was beautiful, fair of face, and she had a gorgeous figure. She looked like something out of Esquire. About July. <laughs> I got up from my table and walked across the room. was in cinema scope. <laughs> she began to speak. Someone please help me. Please. I'll help you, ma'am. What is it? It's taken me a long time to get here. I walked for over five days, over mountains, across rivers, through the hot desert. I was even captured by Indians. No. <laughs> yes. They held me captive for a while. But when I gave them a handful of beads and a cheap necklace, they let me go. Stupid Indians. <laughs> what is it you want? I need a man to go back with me to where I came from. I need help back there urgently. But, miss, that's a dangerous trip. I know. So I'm offering a thousand dollars in gold to any man who will come with me. Well? Or if you prefer, I'll give you a great big kiss instead. This was a challenge to my manhood. <laughs> I did what any other red-blooded man would do. We left after I deposited the money in the bank. <laughs> traveled through the dangerous country, she told me the whole story. She and her husband were working a gold mine which collapsed. Her husband was trapped and she couldn't get him out herself. She left him food and water and went looking for help. When we reached the mine, he was still alive. I spoke to him. Gee, partner, I feel sorry for you. You must have gone through a terrible ordeal. It was awful, terrible. Eight long days and nights being trapped in here alone. I didn't mind the pain from my broken leg so much, but it was the loneliness I couldn't stand. The terrible, frightening loneliness, day after day, night after night, no one to look at, to talk to, just being alone, alone, alone. And this morning, a big rattlesnake crawled in here. Oh, my goodness. What did you do? I taught him to play gin rummy. <laughs> <laughs> look, take it easy, partner. You're out of your mind. I'll try to dig you out. Not right now. I want to finish this game. Gin. <laughs> Ouch! Boy, what a sore loser. <laughs> The snake bit you. Oh, do something. Do something. No, it's too late. I'm going fast. Darling, kiss me goodbye. Yes, dear. <laughs> Who do I hate to go? <laughs> Everything is turning black. Kiss me again. <laughs> Look, die already! <laughs> hmm. 
And I, I had to take the leading role. <laughs> what a jerk I was. Naturally. <laughs> a few minutes later, he passed on. It was then that his wife said that she had fallen in love with me, so we got married. What a sneaky way for her to get her thousand dollars back. <laughs> Truly, this is a garden of evil. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in a minute to tell you about my television program, which goes on at 7 p.m. tonight over the CBS television network. But first, here's the sweetheart of Lucky Strike, Miss Dorothy Collins. If you want a better wheat from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste. Yet it's the toasted, toasted cigarette. They take fine tobacco. It's light tobacco. It's mild tobacco, too. And it's toasted. Yes, it's toasted. Cause the toasting brings the flavor right through So to get a better taste from your cigarette Lucky Strike is the brand to get It's toasted to give you the best taste Yet it's the toasted, toasted cigarette Friends, that song gives you the big reason Why so many millions of smokers always ask for Lucky Strike A lucky tastes better It's toasted to taste better the better taste of Lucky Strike begins with fine tobacco. Why, sure, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. But there's even more to it than that. Just before it's made into Lucky Strike cigarettes, that fine tobacco is toasted. The famous Lucky Strike process, it's toasted, tones up Lucky's mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. That's the Lucky Strike story, pure and simple and why you'll enjoy them. A lucky taste better because it's the cigarette of fine tobacco and it's toasted to taste better. So get a carton of better tasting Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned before, tonight I'm doing my first television show of the season. And this year I'll be on TV every other week. And of course, radio every week. Gee, what hard work. If I didn't stay 39, I'd never be able to take it. <laughs> Good night, folks. I'm a little old. I mean, a little late. <laughs> the Jack Benny Show tonight was written by Milk Josephsburg, John Packerberry, Al Goldman, Al Gordon, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny Program was brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.